Hey guys, I'm David DiMuzio. And I'm Steve Cook. And this is Hair Loss Hope. Today we're going to talk about an essential tool for maximum density in a hair transplant that many clinics around the world do not use. Even many very expensive clinics do not use. And Steve is going to go over some of the details of that. Hey David, you know, the thing about one of my favorite sayings in the industry is a hair transplant is very easy to do. It's very difficult to do it right. There's a lot of components that go into, a, let's call it a perfect procedure. All right. So of course, you know, you've seen our videos before. You're going to choose the right doctor, the right clinic. You're going to look at his reviews. You're going to look at different examples of his work on video, his or her work on video, on photos. Um, we're going to talk to their consultants and we're going to get a, a, a take on how this doctor does his work. Does he specialize in FUE? Does he specialize in FUT? Does he do both? And does he do both really well? And we've helped you kind of set up a plan. Are you using preventative treatments? Are you not using preventative treatments? And what's your situation? What's your donor hair like? So after we clear all that off the table, we really have to look at what these clinics are doing once you get there. And many of you are traveling in from outside the markets. So even during the coronavirus, you're coming in across country or halfway across the country. And it's pretty admirable. And what's waiting for you? What are you walking into? One of my other favorite sayings is there are no surprises. There's never going to be a surprise when I communicate with someone and guide them because I'm a consumer. I'm that person 20, 25 years ago that's wondering what I'm going to walk into. What are the surprises that that person there at that clinic forgot to tell me? One of the most important things when it comes down to these clinics is the use of microscopes. Microscopes and hair transplantation. What is that all about? When you're using a microscope, you're able to slice away the tiny tissue done under high magnification so that you can dense pack the follicles as close together as possible. Now, if you really want to get kind of techy and nerdy, go online and see how many follicular units you can get in a square centimeter, you're going to come up with kind of a, a range. And it's also based on your race, the type of supportive tissue you have, the kind of hair you have. So those numbers are going to vary. But the reality is there's no getting around not using microscopes to make sure that the graphs are properly prepared before they're dense packed. Mm. So I'm going to throw some names out at you. Bernstein Medical in New York City, Feller, Dr. Feller in Long Island, Dr. Sauer Wasserbauer in San Francisco, Dr. Bob Nabalski in Seattle, Dr. Craig Ziering in LA, Dr. Dan McGrath in Austin, Texas, Dr. Epstein in Miami, Dr. Bowden in Connecticut, all of these doctors, I'm telling you, are using microscopes. Look at their work, talk to them, find out their techniques. They're all board certified and they're all dense packing, specifically in that hairline, especially if you have the dark hair and the light skin. So why are you talking to someone or why is someone talking to you from a clinic that doesn't use microscopes if you ask this question? Now you're gonna to talk to a salesperson who's gonna use all the reasons why there's going to be no microscopes when they arrived. Well, sir, we don't use microscopes because of this, 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 and this. Well, then I ask you that question. The names that I threw out at you, which are highly regarded, I call them the Coalition of Independent Hair Transplant Doctors, who I have a lot of respect for and have visited most of these clinics, are using the top technology in the industry. Hassan and Wong, they use microscopes. Hassan and Wong, absolutely. Some of the, the best dense packing I've ever seen in my life. And I would put them up against anybody. So why would Hassan and Juan use microscopes and Dr. Smith in Phoenix, Arizona not use a microscope? Well, the reasons are is they're very difficult to train people to use. I, I, I like to call these doctors lazy doctors because they just don't want to take the time to use the appropriate technology and techniques in order to do this type of procedure. So again, not having a bad word to say about anybody in the industry, there's certain doctors that may not use microscopes for some reason and do a very good job for a specific type of hair type. I don't know what that is, but that may be possible. <laughs> the reality is, is when you're trying to fish through all this stuff as a consumer, we like to talk about kind of standard operating procedure. And I'm one of these guys, and I always will be, that have very little donor hair left, and I wanna make sure I maximize that. So I wanna to go to a clinic that's doing the hair transplant the way I expect it to be done. I am unequivocally telling you that you do not want to have a hair transplant done unless that clinic, that doctor, and that team 
are kind of playing the music together with microscopes. It's a very important part of the procedure. And Steve, just because cost is always something that pops up in consumers' minds, um, it's important to also know that microscopes are very expensive, right? Like, how much uh, would, are these microscopes? They're they're extremely expensive. I mean, these are you know these are, this is technology. I believe somewhere between three and four thousand dollars per microscope. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's expensive. You know, it's interesting that we were talking yesterday, and you were having a conversation with a doctor. I think you might have interviewed him. He does FUE in, in India, mm. or and I, I had watched his video, and he had kind of gone through the differences in his technique versus DHI and whatnot. It was very interesting. And if you listen real closely to him, he talks about once the tissue's extracted and then it's placed under the microscope. Yep. To me, that's like, what would be the reason for him wasting his time putting the tissue under a microscope? And, he, and he's in India, you know, spending three or four thousand dollars per microscope. You know, in a in a country where it's even less expensive uh, to get hair transplants and things like that, but they're still spending the money on the equipment that they need, you know, to do the proper job. It's absolutely a must. It's it's like saying, well, you know, in the Super Bowl, one of the teams is not going to use shoulder pads. Like, you know, it's, <laughs> it's just like why why would we why would we entertain having a hair transplant if they're not using the right equipment? To me, it's it's shocking, and I thought I would bring it to the consumer's attention. 